So we, we're going to keep talking about anatomy and, you know, like before you do anything, before you start learning any type of science, you need to learn basic language. So we first thing first, we need to talk about anatomical planes and the language associated with it. Many of you already know that, but kind of to bring everybody on the same page. So we have... Um, three major planes in a human that can cut through the human body, okay? And they will separate human body in parts, right? Uh, the coronal, uh, well, we'll start with mid-sagittal. mid, -sagittal. mid -sagittal plane right here, okay, this one, will separate the human body into the left and right, or sinister and dexter parts, okay? Now, um, the, not only we need to know the anatomical terminology, you know, the sinister and dexter, we also need to know the directional terminology. How do you talk about body parts and their relative position towards each other? So, mid-sagittal plane allows us to use the terms lateral and medial. Lateral is farther from the midline, and medial is closer. Now, let me give you an example. So, my ear is lateral to my eye. Does that make sense? Now, in order to figure out which term you use, you know, if I, if I have a question for you on the exam, your shoulder to your neck. What is the proper terminology? You put mid-sagittal plane, you know, imaginary mid-sagittal plane, and you think, okay, shoulder, neck. Shoulder will be lateral, right? Nose to the cheek, nose will be medial to the cheek. Does that make sense? You can, no? Ali? So, again, well, let's look at, at, at this lady right here. So, I have a midline, okay? If something is closer to the midline, it's going to be medial. If something is farther from the midline, it will be lateral. So, when we talk about two body parts, we use medial lateral. Okay, we're going to use more examples, we're going to use more examples, you know, and you will learn more about it. Okay, it's pretty much like, if I'm in anatomical position, my palms are lateral to my hips. Make sense? Just, just the repetitive use of it will, will make you comfortable with the directions. Now, how many mid-sagittal planes do we have? Only one, that's right, because it's mid-sagittal. You can only, you know, have one plane cutting you in halves. But you can have multiple sagittal planes. Why focus so much on mid-sagittal or sagittal plane imaging? For instance, this is the mid-sagittal plane. That's the image of the human body. You can see, you know, you can see the rectum. You can see the, the vertebral column, right? Now, if you will move the focal plane back and forth, mid-sagittal plane will become sagittal. Like if you cut through here or here. How many sagittal planes can there be? As many as you want, right? As many as you want, depending on the focal plane. Okay? Transverse plane. This one, horizontal one. Okay, it separates the body to the superior and inferior portions, or cranial and caudal. Caudal means closer to the tail. Again, remember, anatomical terminology is relative. We don't say 
torso is cranial or torso is caudal. If I will ask you torso to the abdomen, torso to the abdomen is superior or cranial, okay? Those are synonyms. If I ask you, I don't know, buttocks to the head, inferior or caudal. Does that make sense? So it's something to something. Again, I will give you questions like that. You will have a question. Something to something is. Got it? It will be on anatomy exam. Coronal or frontal plane. You can see it right here. It cuts the body like this. Okay, separates the body into the anterior and posterior portions. Other terms that are synonymous to anterior and posterior are ventral and dorsal. So my forehead and the back of my head. My forehead is ventral to my back head. Does that make sense? My Mammary region is anterior to my lumbar region. Does that make sense? Again, be able to operate with these terms. Ventral, dorsal, anterior, posterior. Okay. Now there's an oblique plane which is not shown on this, on this picture. The oblique plane is the one that cuts the body at an angle. It doesn't have any directional terminology associated with it. Something like this. Okay, that's a bleak plane. You can have as many oblique planes at as many angles as you want. How many transverse planes there are? Transverse. What about here? What about here? What about here? What about here? This? How many? Huh? As many as I want, right? I can cut the body at any any place. What about the the coronal plane? How many? Huh? As many as I want, right? Because I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. It's all going to be coronal or frontal plane. Does that make sense? Okay. Understand? What is the plane? I'm, I, will, I may show you the picture and ask which plane am I pointing at. Understand which terminology is associated with a particular plane. Okay? Any questions on that? Now, the last, well, not the last, but another piece of terminology that sometimes is a little bit confusing. Proximal versus distal. Before we talk about proximal and distal, I want to ask you a question. How many limbs does a human have? Four. No, no. Well, five is something awkward. Four. Which limbs do we have? Two arms, two legs, right? Everybody agrees that we have four limbs. Is a head, head, is it a limb? Everybody agrees on that? Good. Because proximal and distal generally is used for limbs. Proximal and distal is used as to relation of the, you know, how close it is to the attachment to the trunk. So your arms attached to the trunk at your shoulders. Your legs are attached to the trunk at your hips. If something is closer to the attachment to the trunk, it is proximal. Your elbow is proximal to your wrist. Make sense? If something is farther from the point of attachment, it's distal. Your ankle is distal to your knee. Does that make sense? The reason why we don't use it, one of the reasons why we don't use it on the head. Head is considered to be a part of the trunk. When we talk about the trunk, we include head, neck, and the body, okay? Limbs are separate. 
my clear. Now, there are going to there're going to be questions when you will have to say something to something is proximal, distal, I don't know, anterior, posterior, inferior, superior. Does that make sense? Always assume that I'm talking about the person in the anatomical position, which is this. Well, I don't need to show my feet, but that's this. Okay? So in this case, your palms are facing forward. Does that make sense? That's anatomical position. So if I ask you, what is the relation of your nose to your mouth? Your nose to your mouth is superior. You always use the plane, it's easiest to separate them. Like, you cannot really separate nose and mouth using mid-sagittal or coronal plane. Does that make sense? Okay? I will do my best to avoid ambiguous questions. Like if I ask you ear and nose, okay, it's kind of, can you separate them like this? Sure, yeah. You can do anterior posterior or you can do medial lateral. Right? I will try to avoid questions like that. I always check my questions, so, and if there is something coming up during the exam, you must come to me and talk to me about it. Okay? Make sense? Let's move on. A few more terms. Ipsilateral and contralateral. So this is ipsilateral. Your spleen and your descending colon. And this is contralateral, ascending and descending colon. What does contralateral mean? What do you think? Opposite sides? Ipsilateral? Same side? So your left leg and your left arm are ipsilateral. Your left arm and your right arm are contralateral. Does that make sense? Left leg and left arm, okay. ipsilateral, same size. Left, ar left arm and right arm, contralateral, opposite side from the midline. Recall? Intermediate in between. So, sternum is intermediate to the ribs. Okay? Genitalia are intermediate to the coxal bones for instance. Nose is intermediate to the eyes. Okay. Now, for some reason, that's the, the concept that causes some reason struggles. Deep and superficial. Closer to the center of the body, farther from the center of the body. What is the most superficial structure of your body? Mm -hmm. Skin. Make sense? So everything is deep to the skin. Does that make sense? Excellent. There are some organs that have several layers, anatomically defined layers to them. For instance, your kidney has the outer layer that is called cortex and the inner layer that is called medulla. So cortex to medulla is superficial. Very good. Does that make sense? Excellent. That's good. Because I'm going to ask you all those questions. Understand the idea of deep to superficial. Like your muscles are generally superficial to your organs. Like skeletal muscles. Does that make sense? Your organs are deeper. Sections, cross section and longitudinal section. One of the best examples, you take the straw, you cut it across, you have the cross section. Pretty much that's sort of a cross section of the blood vessel. Does that make sense? You cut it along, you have longitudinal section. So if you come back to the human body, 
Transverse plane will produce what type of section? Cross section. Midsagittal and coronal will produce longitudinal. One interesting thing. If you have Humpty Dumpty, you know Humpty Dumpty, right? Does it really have longitudinal or cross sections? It's pretty much spherical. You cannot do longitudinal or cross. There's no difference, right? You've got to have something that's long. You can do it on human, you can do it on a snake, you can do it on anything that's elongated. You take a cube, it doesn't matter which type of section you do, they aren't different. There's no difference between cross and longitudinal, just to give you a perspective on that. Does that make sense? So only elongated structures can be cut in a cross section or in the longitudinal section. And we're going to deal with those structures. We're going to deal with like, in, well, we're not going to deal with intestine, but brain, there's going to be longitudinal, there's going to be cross section. Okay. Any questions? No, we can move on. There you go. Body regions. It looks intimidating, I know, but I'm going to guide you through this and I will tell you how to approach the memorization of either body regions or muscles or bones. Okay, so yes, you do have to know all the body regions that are listed here. However, it's not short answer exam, so your exam questions will look like you're going to see the same dude, okay, that same guy, with arrows pointing in a certain section. And you're going to have, you know, four answers, you pick one. Make sense? It's multiple choice. So, how in my opinion, you may use different strategies, it's fine with me, but in my opinion, what is the best way to approach this? Regions. Don't try to memorize everything. Same time, you know. How do you eat an elephant? Piece by piece, that's right. So same goes here, okay? Piece by piece. Focus on the head first, or on the leg, or arm, whatever you like more, okay? And then move on to another part. And many names make perfect sense okay so let's start with the head frontal and occipital that's easy right now ears otic otitis media inflammation of the ears otitis media otic region another name for this is you can run into it auricular a U R I C U L A R. Yes. No, it's not from online textbook. I'm not sure that online textbook has uh, this one. It probably should. I'm not. I'm not hundred percent sure. It's from some other textbook, the Pearson textbook. Oh, the PowerPoint. It's on the blackboard. All PowerPoints are in the blackboard. I'm giving you PowerPoints absolutely. Sure, yeah. And you're going to see that same dude in the lab that I will put up today. So you will have the dude without labels. And you're going to have a list. And you can label yourself. Does that make sense? Now, face. Eyes. Orbital or ocular. Synonyms. Makes perfect sense, right? Nasal. Oral. So far, I don't think I'm telling you something new. Now, a few things that make absolutely no sense. Mental. That's your chin. Okay. And one thing that you didn't encounter yet, your cheeks. You have to know that it's buccal. So I'm telling you now, know that. B-U-C-C-A-L. Let me write it in 
So it's B U C C A L. Chick. Okay. You may have heard the term like buccal swab. Swab done from, you know, inside of the cheek. Got it? Can we move down? Cervical. It's a neck. It is not in the uterus. It's the neck. Because cervix in Latin means neck. So cervix of the uterus means neck of the uterus. When we talk about cervical region, it's this one. Right? Now, a little sort of a addition. If I want to say there is a, a wound in the back of the neck, how would you say it in the proper terms? Huh? Cervical, but how does the surgeon know that it's not in the front, not in the side, but in the back? Posterior aspect of the cervical region. Make sense? Front of your trunk. There is a lot. So this whole thing, it, it's highlighted in orange. So this whole orange thing is thoracic. It's pretty much something like this. Okay, that's all thoracic. Got it? It involves some smaller regions. Pectoral, which pretty much covers the, the pectoralis major muscle. The chest. Mammary, it's the region around the nipples. And auxiliary. It's hard to show, but auxiliary is the region, it's your armpits. Got it? Now in the back, um, you have scapular. That's a shoulder blade. The anatomical name for the shoulder blade is scapula. You have vertebral, which makes absolutely perfect sense. Right? You have lumbar on the sides, so it's, it's lateral to vertebral region in the inferior aspect of you know your back. Does that make sense? So that, that comes the trunk. Oh no, not yet. You have abdominal, it's your tummy, okay. Umbilical region is your belly button, and then inferior to abdominal, you have pelvic. You can think of pelvic, that's, you know, that's where your um, urinary bladder is. You feel it is being full when you want to pee, okay, and inferior, <coughs> sorry, Inferior to pelvic is inguinal, that's groin. Inguinal doesn't really include the genitalia. Genitalia is the pubic region. Okay? So it kind of goes smaller and smaller, like an like a inverse pyramid. You go from pelvic to inguinal to pubic. Does that make sense? Now, if you turn the gentleman around, you will see the region that is called perineal region. It's a small part of pretty much the skin between the anal orifice and the genitalia. Okay? In between the legs. Does that make sense? Now, upper limbs. Deltoid. Everybody knows that. Brachial. Anti brachial. Now, anti means before, in front. So, before brachial, anti brachial region. Does that make sense so far? You have anti cubital. Let me. So anterior aspect of your elbow, it's antecubital. 
Okay, posterior aspect is olecranal. There are, there are reasons for that. Okay. So olecranal fossa right here, and olecranal uh, part of the, of the ulna. Okay. Now, carpal, carpal tunnel syndrome, palmar. So front of your palm, digital, pollux, it's your thumb. Now, some of them you have to memorize. Palmer makes sense, right? Carpal makes sense. This is called dorsum of the hand. So it, it's not shown here. Okay, dorsum of the hand. And that pretty much concludes the upper limbs. Now, lower limbs. You start with coxal, which is hips. You go to the femoral, which is thighs. And then distal to thighs on the anterior aspect is patellar, it's your knee, and popliteal, which is the back of your knee. Does that make sense? Now if you go down, crural is your shin, sural is a calf. Tarsal region is the ankle. Calcaneal region is the heel. Plantar is the sole of your foot. And hallux is the big toe. Proper memorization of the regions now will help you a lot. And we're going to talk about bones and muscles. Because in many cases, those bones and muscles repeat names. For instance, muscles that move your thumb will be called adductor pollicis longus, for instance. Pollicis, pollux, thumb. Okay? Muscles that refer, you know, move the big toe will be hallucis, hallux. Okay? Um, calcaneal region, for instance, has the same name as the heel bone, which is calcaneus. So please work on that. This is your study guide. Okay, quite literal. That's your study guide. I'm not going to ask anything that is not here. And I'm not going to ask anything that I did not explicitly told you to know. Like buccal or dorsum of the hand. So only two things that I kind of added. Any questions? Yes. Auricular? I don't bother. I mean, it's just two synonyms. I'm not going to ask specifically auricular. If you know otic, that's fine. Okay? Any questions? Let's move on. Cavities. You must know body cavities, and you must know to which aspect they belong to. We have two aspects, the ventral aspect and dorsal aspect. Red is the ventral aspect, or ventral cavity. Yellow is the dorsal aspect, or dorsal cavity. Dorsal aspect includes two. It includes cranial cavity and vertebral cavity. You have to know what each cavity contains. So cranial contains brain, vertebral cavity contains spinal cord. Does that make sense? Awesome. Now, <clears throat> on this picture, 
do you understand the sort of a, a vantage point this one on on your when you look on your right do you understand the vantage point you're looking at the body up front it's the frontal view so what you can see is the cranial cavity and you can see a part of the vertebral cavity good is that clear okay let's move on yes sure sure and tell me if I'm going too fast okay That's the whole, you know, dorsal cavity is the yellow one. Yeah, it's it's parts, the cranial and vertebra, vertebral cavity. Now, ventral cavity, the, the front one, the red one, contains some more divisions. So, first of all, we can divide ventral cavity into the whole thoracic. Oh, sorry, thoracic portion. Okay, and abdominal pelvic portion. So thoracic is the cavity above the diaphragm. Abdominal pelvic is below the diaphragm. Are we clear? Abdominal pelvic is further divided into the abdominal cavity and pelvic cavity. Which organs would be located in the pelvic cavity? What do you think? Good. Kidneys, no. Bladder. Reproductive organs. Rectum. Rectum. So whatever is very, very low. Okay. It's like, like here. Okay. Like this part. Abdominal. What you're going to find in abdominal? Spleen, liver, yes. Spleen, liver, stomach, pancreas. This whole thing, appendix belongs to in, intestines, right? So the whole intestinal thing. You can look at this to uh, the gentleman and the lady over there, okay? Pretty much the abdominal cavity is open. So you can see. Like the stomach, a little bit of a liver, all the intestines, kidneys are hidden there, okay? All the smaller stuff, like pancreas and gallbladder there. Make sense? Now, thoracic cavity. Two pleural cavities. Right and left. What's in the pleural cavities? Lungs. You will have a question about the cavities, and if I ask you, if I ask you about the pleural cavity, you have to recognize whether it's the right or the left pleural cavity. Am I clear? Okay. You will never see any pictures. That's my promise. You will never see any pictures that you haven't seen before. Good? Clear? In the center, that whole thing is called mediastinal cavity, which can be further separated into the superior mediastinum and pericardial cavity. What's the pericardial? What pericardial cavity contains? Heart. Superior mediastinum. Thymus is a tiny organ which we all of us pretty much lack at this age. And there's a it's a fork shaped gland that uh, is important for your immune system. Thymus. Tonsils are here. Huh? Oh, it starts to disappear pretty much. It starts to decrease at about age of seven ten. 
and it it doesn't disappear completely but it shrinks a lot it still produces some T cells even in your 70s but it's mostly active during the childhood okay any questions on the cavities again you're gonna see exactly the same picture without labels okay regions and quadrants abdominal pelvic quadrants you can see them in the upper no sorry at the bottom okay look this is simple really upper right upper left you know lower right lower left that's it it's, I mean not rocket science at all okay now understand the distribution of organs between those quadrants I will not give you like a tricky question sort of where's the intestine it's everywhere okay but certain things you gotta have you gotta know sort of a hallmark for instance that your spleen in the left upper your liver is in the right upper it's probably the most important because if you have a patient with cholecystitis which is the inflammation of the gallbladder it's going to be pain in the upper right quadrant does that make sense if you have a patient with splenomegaly you will detect splenomegaly in upper left quadrant right here make sense so you got to know that stuff the basic uh, try to kind of imagine this picture just keep it in mind and that's one more study tool I want uh, I will mention to you now anatomical regions the abdominal pelvic regions it can be uh, your abdominal pelvic area can be divided into nine regions and I will ask you to know all of them and I will you know on anatomy exam you will see the arrow going to the region and then the question about it am I clear umbilical this in the center around your belly button so far makes sense there it is just look at it okay that's umbilical region epigastric and hypogastric epi means what above hypo means below so above the stomach and below the stomach it's not very accurate but kind of a way to make an association and remember that am I clear now side regions right and left hypochondriac hypo means below below what hypochondriac chondriac ribs yes means below the ribs left hypochondriac and right hypochondriac got it lumbar region well they are this regions are at the level of anatomical region which is lumbar okay left lumbar right lumbar so the full name would be left lumbar abdominal pelvic region right lumbar abdominal pelvic region okay and these ones are iliac or inguinal well there's an inguinal region right here but they are called iliac as well because if you kind of do this to your hips if you hit on your hips here you will feel the bone this bone is the coxal bone the hip bone and the part that you feel here is the iliac crest okay or ilium does that make sense nine abdominal pelvic regions four quadrants questions okay of course but look I'm gonna provide answers so you will not get the answer you will not get say there is an exam the arrow points here 
I'm not going to give you is that left iliac or left inguinal. I'm not that type of person. Believe me, no. Does that make sense? So my purpose is not tripiole. Membranes, body membranes. There are three of the three types: cutaneous, mucous, and serous membranes. Cutaneous membrane is only skin. Okay. You have heard, I bet, terminology like you know subcutaneous injections, or subcutaneous tissue. Cutaneous means skin. It's dry and it antibacterial, and we're going to talk about it pretty soon. Mucous membranes line organs that are open to the exterior environment. Give me examples. Hmm? Nose, inside of the nose, yes. Huh? Um, eventually, yes. It's deeper in the middle ear. Yes. Expand on it. Esophagus, if you go farther. Is stomach open to the environment? Really? Are you eating the food? Yes. Your, think about your digestive system. It's a hole in you. It starts at your mouth and ends in your anus. It's a very complicated hole, but it's a hole. And this entire hole is exposed to the environment. When you eat something, it's dirty. So you got to have mucous membrane protecting. Now, there was a mention of nostrils. Can you expand on the nostrils? How do we call the whole thing? Nostrils, lungs, you know. Respiratory system, it is all exposed, right? Air gets all the way down. What else is open to the... So we got digestive. We got respiratory. What else? They, they are, yes, eyes. That's mucous membrane. What else? Hmm? Well, it's kind of a part of digestive. Maybe you can count it. Skin is cutaneous. It's structurally different because it's uh, it's a different protective. It's it's not mucus here because it kind of gets yeah it gets more pounding than mucous membranes. There you go. I was waiting for someone to tell me that reproductive system. It's open to the outside if you think about it there is I mean I'm not saying that you know it's like a, a wind holing through the urethra but technically something can get in there okay and if you female reproductive system is more open than male because of the size of the orifice okay yeah it is open it's all it's all mucous membrane Okay, vaginal mucosa, the urethral mucosa, glans penis mucosa, it's all mucous membranes. Make sense? Serous membranes. These guys cover the organs in the body. So they aren't open to anything. They actually cover the organs. Um, if you would... Uh, I don't know, butcher the animal, cut it open, and take out, I don't know, the intestines. How does it feel, the fresh organs? Slimy. They feel slimy. That's those serous membranes. And we're going to, I'm not going to talk about the structure, you know, we're going to uh, do some conversation. So, serous membranes that surround organs, like, I don't know, intestines or heart, or lungs, they produce secretion, watery secretion. What's the purpose of that secretion, first and foremost? From what? So if, if you say jump or run, what organs are going to do against each other? They're going to rub, right? They're going to hit and rub. And you don't want them to get damaged. Okay, so that 
serous secretion provides lubrication to the organs. Make sense? That's the function. So serous membranes, they aren't exposed to anything except each other. They aren't exposed to the outside, no way. All right? Am I clear? I'm going to ask you, you know, you're going to find such and such membrane in blah, blah, blah. Or much a membrane and the organ system. All right? So we're going to continue with anatomical terminology next class.